Check these out, guys. Designing, marketing, and launching a brand has never been easier with AI. But just because it's easy doesn't mean it's gonna be great. So in this video, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know to better design and market with AI to help you create better products that your customers are gonna love. But before we start designing your brand, it's crucial that you understand who your customer avatar is. An avatar is a person that embodies everything about the customer that's gonna be buying your products. You give him or her a name, you know exactly how old they are, what schools they went to, and who their friends group are. You also need to know what brands they follow, what brands they're already purchasing from. All of this information is gonna help you create the guiding star of who you're gonna be designing and selling to. Because when it comes to using AI, it's very easy to get lost and just go down a mix of a bunch of random designs. And this is the reason why we're seeing a lot of rudimentary designs coming from AI because anybody can do it, but very few people have thought about who their customer avatar is. It's very easy to go down a rabbit hole of a lot of different random designs. So by creating that target avatar, you're now able to start on your mood board. Now a mood board is gonna be the elements that are gonna make up that collection. It could be certain things that you want the designs to have, and it could also be examples of other brands in the space that they're already buying from. So make sure you really dive into some of these elements here. Now in our example for the product that we're designing, our customer avatar is really into Gladiator, movies like Top Gun, and a lot of these other things that really inspire them to be a better man and push it to the limit. And because Gladiator is one of those movies that are really core to the DNA of our customer, we're gonna go ahead and go with it because there's also a movie releasing later this year. So always consider what major blockbuster things are happening or what major movements are happening in pop culture that you can align some designs to. It doesn't mean that you're gonna just start using Gladiator branding on it, but it's gonna be the elements that come from this. And with all this information now completed on our mood board, it's time for us to take it to design. When it comes to designing with AI, what's important to note is that you need to be able to get high resolution graphics and you also need to be able to edit them for them to work on products. Just because something looks good on a screen doesn't mean that it's gonna potentially look good on printed fabric. So for this reason, we're gonna go with Kittle who has an AI program, but then it also allows you to prepare those graphics for print production. And another huge benefit that they have is that they also help you create your brand identity. They have a variety of different templates for branding across advertising, social media. You can really get a cohesive campaign going all through the library that they established. Now, as I was designing this, I decided that I wanted to go with something that could really elevate these designs. I wanted it to match the Gladiator theme. So what I came up with was a football jersey because football is the new age Gladiator. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make a custom cut and sew football jersey using these designs and since we're using a football jersey all I'm gonna do is bring in some of the mock-ups that I found on Google now what I'm looking to do right here guys is actually create a couple of different variations of the concepts that I had in mind another cool benefit about designing with AI using Kittle is the fact that they allow you to upload reference work here into the style uploading that reference work what it's actually doing is the AI is using that to create your prompts right so it's using that style to actually create a design that's like it now what's important to note about using AI is that you don't want to change all the prompts like all together at once. You want to start with certain keywords and once you hit a certain idea and direction that you like, you can then start to change other keywords or add things to it to see what else you can get. What's also important to note about designing with AI is that you need to be able to manipulate the backgrounds. You need to be able to cut those backgrounds out. So what I'm going to do with Kittle is actually try to remove the background with the AI program that they got. But unfortunately for this AI design, since there's too many elements involved, it's not going to work to actually remove the background. A few weeks ago, I would kind of be forced to have to use it or take it to a different program. But with the power of Kittle now, they actually created something called an eraser tool. And what's really cool about this tool is that you can essentially just erase anything that you don't want in the design. So what I'm going to do for this cross scissor design is I'm actually going to remove a lot of the different ornaments around the design. This will allow us to get a vector graphic that that's just a cross scissor design. And with that, it looks amazing. Guys, AI, designing with AI has never been more exciting. And honestly, this is coming out incredible. This is coming out according to the vision I had, but probably even better because I'm gonna be completely upfront with you guys. I'm not a designer. When it comes to designing, programs like Kittle, when you use a mood board and you have a direction for your design, will really be your co-pilot and you can start making things that people will actually wanna buy. Now that we have something that we could show people, we don't wanna 
just show our friends and family. You wanna go to our target avatar. So that person that you identified at the beginning is the person that you're gonna to turn to for feedback. And this person might be somebody in your friends group or a friend of a friend. Take some time, send them a text message, put it together in a nice little presentation like this and just be like, yo, what style do you like? One, two, or three? And they'll tell you, they'll be like, yo, I really like this, but if you were to do this, it'd be even better, right? So take that positive criticism, make those adjustments, and now we're ready to go to production. And when it comes to making the products that you design with AI, you got three different options. The very first one we covered in a recent video that I'm gonna link right up there, it uses something called print on demand. Now when it comes to working with print on demand, you're limited to the products that that print on demand platform has. Now in that video, we actually designed a polo style of shirt, came out really legit, and they have a lot of different product options for sublimation, but those aren't the products that are gonna make this collection really pop. Now the second option that we got to sample these designs is to actually order some press art and then order some jersey blanks that we could find online. This will bring our total cost of sampling to around 20 bucks when it comes with all the materials and your time included. Now this is a great option, but since I want to make these products for our customers and some of our top customers that are street crafters, I want to go ahead and elevate this. And for this reason, we're going to go with cut and sew. Now there's one thing you need to know about cut and sew, and it's that if you use a factory that doesn't specialize in the products that you're making, chances are you're going to be required to order a certain amount of fabric, which means that you're going to be required to order a certain amount of products. Now on average, factory want to just order at least one roll of the fabric that you need so that's anywhere between 50 to 60 yards and then depending on how many products those yardage can make they're going to require that as a minimum because they don't want to just waste their time and their fabric so a way to circumvent this and create incredible ai designs with cut and sew is to actually go to a supplier that specializes in the products that you're trying to make so in this example, since we're making a football jersey, we're actually gonna to go to a supplier that specializes in sportswear. Now you can find these types of suppliers anywhere on Alibaba, but there's actually one in Las Vegas called Genre Sports that we're gonna be working with. Now the making process that we're gonna undertake here is called dye sublimation. Now when it comes to designing those patterns, you're usually provided a template where you gotta fill in your designs. You gotta keep in mind where the seams are gonna go, and then you also gotta keep in mind the contour of that design. So try to keep your designs as closest to the body as you can. Now, once you complete those patterns, the manufacturer typically sizes them up and down according to size. So what you gotta focus on is just making sure that those templates are filled up right. Because once they're finalized, they're gonna undergo a printing process with an industrial printer. Now through this industrial printer, it's actually just gonna print the ink right onto this paper. That paper is then gonna be loaded up into a heat press table. This is a lot like the heat press that you might use for Street Crafter Press Art, but this is for dye sublimation. What's happening here is that the paper is placed on top of the jersey fabric that you're making your products from, and then it's actually gonna be heat pressed as it rolls down into the bottom. The end design is the design actually embedded into the fabric. So this doesn't live on top, it lives inside of it. So it's never gonna wash away. Once this is completed, it goes into these laser cutters, which actually cut out and trace the patterns that were created in the design. And once those patterns are cut out, they go into sewing. And in the sewing process, we've got people that are actually gonna sew it all together according to the design. And the end product is going to be a completed garment. And this is how the end designs came out. AI made these designs possible. Check it out, guys. And with the products on hand, it's time for the most important part of the process, the marketing of it. Now, when it comes to marketing, you have to have incredible product photography. You need to be able to show details of that product so your customer will wanna buy it at the price point that you're selling it at. Now, when it comes to photography, you have three options. You could do the shoot yourself, and if you do it yourself, just make sure you keep lighting in mind as well as the post-production, which is all the edits. The second option that you got is an option that I recently just took, and this option actually cost me upwards of $2,000 from employee wages to the models to the time to every supply that was needed to execute on that it's a lot of money to do photography and when it comes to doing e-commerce photography and photos for your website it's just as expensive on average if you job it out it might cost you around two hundred dollars to get this and the third option that you have is to use AI now, when it comes to using AI in photography we're gonna be using a feature called model swapping we take you behind the scenes on what we're gonna do and how this is gonna work out now Botica uses AI AI to fully swap the model and background. So the goal is to shoot with decent lighting and we're actually gonna shoot in a shaded area up against a blank wall. And once the photos are taken, we're gonna bulk import the ones we like into Botica Studio. 
and then it's going to ask you to select the model. Now this is where Bonica really stands out, as the models they have are mastered by them in-house to give it a photorealistic look. You'll also notice that once you proceed a process, it's going to take a few minutes as the AI is actually editing in every detail to give you a professional studio grade finish. You'll notice that once they begin to process, it says it's going to take a few minutes, and this is because the AI is actually editing in every detail to give you a professional look. But the beauty is you can bulk process all these images, and these are the results. Wow, as you can see, Bodica fully replaced Brandon with Eric, and every detail looks like the real deal, and the background was even swapped perfectly. And now this model is somebody that we can use on our site to help sell our product. But now I want to test this capabilities to see what this thing can do. Okay guys, so we are actually going to take some photos on this truck. I want to test to see how this comes out in real backgrounds. Let's see it, we got the model, the one and only Brandon. <laughs> Let's have fun with it. Let's see what it comes up with. And now that we got the truck photos in, the next thing I wanted to do was put some glasses on him and have him sit on a black couch up against a black wall while wearing a black shirt. Now this is very hard for any editor to do. I then imported the photos that we liked and we chose a female model to see what it would do to Brandon. Now as the edits were being completed, a friend of ours stopped at the studio and I actually wanted to get his reaction. <laughs> 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 this is crazy guys, his reaction was nuts, and honestly, as we were getting his reaction, the mailman just happened to drop in, and this is what he thought. <laughs> you took a photo of this guy, right, yesterday, against the left wall, look what AI did. Don't trust the internet. Nah, right. <laughs> Don't trust the internet. Buzzy said, well, she could get it, but... <laughs> <laughs> now you can't make this up guys, AI is changing the game. Even if you don't have a friend like Brandon, they still got you covered. As they also have a flat lay feature here where all you gotta do is photograph the product on the floor with no model. And once you complete the shoot, you will upload the photos and you select the model and within minutes, we got this. <laughs> wow guys, honestly, I don't know who's better, Eric or her. They spend a lot of time and a lot of their R&D in creating these assets that are gonna look super realistic so your audience won't know that it's an AI model. So you can get a high-end looking photo at a fraction of the cost. So I highly encourage that you guys check them out. We're gonna include their links to get started in the resources down below, as well as everything else that we've been talking about throughout this video. Now with the products on hand, next comes launching your collection. And when it comes to selling online, Shopify's where you should be. But even though the monthly rates have gone up, they are allowing you to have a store for just $1 for 30 days with the link in our description, which should give you plenty of time to prove out the model. Which brings us to the question, how much should you price your products at? Now when it comes to pricing guys, there's four things you need to take a look at. The competitors in the space, the quality of your product compared to those competitors, your brand equity, and the cost that it takes to produce these. Now when it comes to the competitors in the space, you need to actually be very honest with what you're creating. So in this example here guys, we ordered this jersey and Chrome Heart sells for $1,200. So can I sell this for $1,200? Yes. Will somebody buy it for $1,200? Probably not. <laughs> you need to be very honest with yourself about the products that you're selling too. Now, some of the things that you need to take a look at when it comes to looking at competitors is the actual build of their garment. Now, if I take a look at this, I'm being honest, we could have probably printed it on the inside and increased that price point. But then also the way that the fabric actually uh, sits on the model and the way it wears, it doesn't feel like a luxury product. And because it's not a luxury product, even if we were to sell it for $1,000, if somebody were to buy this, they'd probably be very disappointed in it because it'd feel more like a $80 to $100 product. And that's really where your brand equity comes into play. When it comes to brand equity, you need to take a look at what you're currently selling products for and figure out how much could you sell a custom product for with that branding and with that power that you brought. So in this example, this jersey would better sell for somewhere between $80 to $100 with the right branding but there's absolutely no way that we can get away for selling it any higher than that. We could, but then your customers will know, hey, this doesn't feel like that price. So even though people are selling stuff for a lot more, you need to be realistic about what the quality of the fabrics to the printing, to the stitching, and what everything is. You can definitely sell them the first time, but can you get them to buy again? So those are super important things to keep in mind when it comes to pricing, guys. And at the very minimum, you have to be able to sell it for two times your cost. So if it costs you $30 to produce, you have to sell it for 60. And the reason for that is because you're in business. You're not a charity. You need to have good margins, and you need to be able to continue growing that business. If you're barely making any money on your products, you're gonna get burnt out, and you're not gonna continue. So a great way to 
to gauge the pricing and the demand of your products before buying in bulk is to actually launch a pre-order. A pre-order campaign allows your customers to place an order and it also gives you some money to place the production run with the factory. This becomes a win-win where you know, hey, people want to buy it at this price and I can make money with the factory doing it. But in order to create that pre-order campaign, you got to have promotions lined up. Now, when it comes to promoting your brand and your products, what's really selling right now is video. You need to consider adding video to the mix of your promotions because photo captions and all that, they're not really taking off like we thought they would in 2023. So you need to have a hard shift on content. And when it comes to making video content, what's really important to keep in mind, guys, is retention and engagement, right? You need to be able to create videos that are attention grabbing and they retain viewership in order for the algorithms to wanna promote. That's really all it boils down to when it comes to creating good videos is that you need to be able to make somebody wanna watch and stay watching. And the better you can do that, the more viewership you're gonna get at lower cost. Now, a really good editing tool that we use internally is also CapCut. CapCut is an incredible tool that allows you to take some really quick social media videos. You can take it on your phone and then you can actually just bring it into CapCut on your phone or on your desktop, edit out those videos and publish them within the same hour. This is a very robust platform and they use a lot of different AI tools to really help streamline your edits. So definitely consider using it for your brand. Now, another key tip that I have for you guys here is that if you're not able to take videos, maybe you're not just video inclined, a really good way to start building an audience through video Video is to actually just reshare and shout out the people that you're resharing. People like to get cross promotions for their own content, so it always helps if you shout them out and you get some views. The idea is that you're building a community around a certain topic. Remember how we talked about the avatar, your target avatar? Well, they're consuming a certain piece of content, whether it be motivational, inspiring, design focused. They have a certain persona and a certain type of content that they like. So the goal for you as a brand owner is, can you create the content that they like to watch? And if you can't make your own content, can you reshare other people's content and start building a community around that topic? The more laser focused you are on the subject for your brand, the easier it is to grow your audience. But I wanna leave you guys with a final nugget here. When it comes to designing, marketing, and selling anything with AI, it's all gonna be about your ability to be a creative director. Let AI be your co-pilot and let it give you information and let it give you designs and let it do everything that it can for you but ultimately it's up to you as the entrepreneur to make the final call and you got to live and die by those results but don't take it too seriously and just have fun with it guys the more you do it the better you're going to get and the reality is your first few designs are probably going to suck and that's okay as long as you put it out there and you get some feedback it's all about this quick learning and iterative work for you to get better, the better the designs, the better the sales, the better you understand your customer, the more community you build, the more sales, and the more you grow. All right, so I hope this video was helpful. And if you're looking and interested in starting up a clothing brand, we actually launched a video here where we show you how to do it in seven days. And maybe this video of creating products with cut and sew was a little too much and you're not all the way there yet, but you have some designs, ideas, and you really wanna take them to the next level. Well, I highly encourage that you check out this video right here because we dive into the designing of AI and actually making it with print on demand. Take a look at that video and I'll see you there.